So things that potentially run a long time should not run on the main thread. That was the best practice before Honeycomb. Since Honeycomb, that best practice became a law, right? So the reason why our apps are specifically crashing is because most of us are running on ice cream sandwich or something similar, right? So you actually are not allowed to perform a long running task on a main thread, right? So what's a long, what would be a long running task? Give me some examples. Uh, it's actually networking, right? I mean, well, yeah, anything, anything that, anything that we are not in control of our own destiny, right? Like, not everyone's got a fast 4G connection, right? So how do you know that this is not going to take 30 seconds, 60 seconds to actually do a post? It could be some 2G connection, timing out, God knows what, right? So so that's that's the first reason to uh, that this would not be able to run. Um, second reason for... Uh, um, se other examples would be connecting to a database, for example, uh, talking to, uh, reading, doing I.O. stuff. All those things could potentially be a long running tasks. So we and we have a single thread that UI runs on. So we should put this on a separate thread. How do you do that? You guys are Java guys. Come on. How do you do that? So the problem is this line here wants to run on a separate thread. How do I do that? What's that? Right into services. Um, yeah, I mean, services would give us something called a background stuff, but in some cases, could be the right solution. Yes, but I kind of want to keep it in this realm because. Yeah. So in Java, when you want to put something on a separate thread, right? And this is just a Java thing. And it's got nothing to do with Android. It's just a very simple Java thing. Uh, you can basically take your code. Let me see. Actually, does this around what? Runnable? Will this work? Oh, that's 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 cool. <laughs> it's actually not runnable, but I want to do a thread dot start. Okay. So in Java, when you want to put something on a separate thread, you take that something, something, right? And you wrap it with this wrapper. Like you basically say, we're, we're right here right now creating a new thread inside of the thread where it's an anonymous inner class, by the way, but don't get stuck on that too much. Uh, we're creating a run method. So we're defining it and then we're saying start. So this is now going to run on a separate thread. Uh, how I did that now um, if you don't like typing which I don't blame you for what you can do is another useful shortcut in Eclipse although in this case it's not perfect it's to go source surround with and then do a runnable So this is the Eclipse mechanism for helping you do a bunch of stuff on your behalf, right? Source, surround, with, runnable. Yeah, you could configure a template. Um, so there are a bunch. Runnable looks like that, and uh, so basically, I could create a new one. I'll say the name is gonna be thread description bam dot start, right? And uh, uh, it's new, but don't worry about this. Uh, this is just me kind of playing with some stuff. So uh, you can actually expand 
like check this out let's try this i could select this i could say source surround with thread bam cool huh but it doesn't matter maybe maybe it's good to type it first time around so you actually see how things work right all right so so far so good in this um so now this is going to be outsourced on a separate thread all right let's give it a shot running Okay, I'm gonna clean this up, Apple K. Update. Bam, died again. But we don't sweat anymore. We know that something, something dies, which is basically look at the exception. So far so good? Do you guys still have it crashing? But we now don't know exactly where it crashed. What's that? Yeah, because you're running on pre-honeycomb. Yeah, so we get probably the same exception. We just don't know what the exception is. So what I could do is I could now catch that exception. So something is dying here, right? So what I could do is I could say source, surround with, try catch block. That actually figures out the type of exception, right? And the only thing that's not, is so it's smart to figure out which exception it could be possibly dying from. But... This is not a proper way of printing that exception, actually. What you would want to do is you would want to print it like this, log.e, tag, comma, um, you know, died, comma, e. So this is a more proper, this is the, the, the Android way of printing that exception to the log cat, which we talked about earlier. You guys following so far? So, so. so if I run this now, I should be able to see at least what, why it's dying, right? So let's try this again. Oops, died. Huh. You don't see a long entry? No. No. Oh, uh, yeah, why didn't I print my log? I'll try this Java, the standard Java way. I'm confused why I didn't print the log yet. It should be printing the log yet. There we go, this is the exception we're looking for. Unknown host exception, right? So let me just recap. So what we've done so far is we wanted to simply do this, three lines of code, right? Okay. We want to do this three lines of code, but we had to put it on a separate thread, which was this ugly stuff here, right? And then we had to actually catch the exception and figure out what's going on, why it's dying, right? If it's dying. 
So the reason, um, so this exception here is somewhat cryptic. No, unknown host exception. It could be many things. It could be that you, uh, your the emulator really is not online, so it has no idea what yambo.marakano.com is, right? Um, I can, you know, this frequently happens in um, with um, firewalls when you do this being a company firewall. It's probably the most common question that people ask from the book. The author is like, oh, I just did everything, and I get this unknown host exception. I'm like, okay, so refer to that post, such and such, right? Because it it could be uh, many things. Um, what I would do to verify the firewall, I would just basically say, hey, can I actually go on my computer? Because sometimes you truly may not have a connection, right? So I, I would verify that I can actually open up a web browser and go outside the world, to outside the world, right? So if I can do that, right? I may even go and be more specific, Yamba. Maratana. You don't need to do this. But if I can do this, that tells me that there would be nothing wrong with our network on the device. That's that's a good way to eliminate that assumption, right? See, it renders, everything's good. So, the other possibility is that we simply don't have permission to access internet. Now, in the past, when I used to do this in uh, back in the uh, you know one X days, uh, Android 1.5, 1.6, I would be like, you know what? Don't even worry about permissions. Just run the code, let it crash, and the exception is going to tell you exactly what happened. So this exception used to be, as opposed to unknown host, it would basically say, you do not have permissions to access the internet. Have you declared such and such permission? Question mark. Like it, it would be so much of a hint. Like it would tell you exactly what's wrong, right? So I think that somebody decided that's too much information, so they kind of made the exception way more cryptic. But it's the same issue. Yeah. No, seriously. Uh, so in Android, whenever you have something that is potentially dangerous, you need to ask the user to grant you the permission to do that something that's potentially dangerous. Accessing internet is one such thing. So you declare the permissions that you need in your manifest file, right? So if I go to my manifest file, I open up permissions, right? We're gonna do it the easy way first, right? So, so you open up a manifest file, you go into permissions tab, you click on add, right? Now, you do not add permission group, permission tree, or permission. What you do is you declare user's permission. So it's not these three. Common, common misconception is like, oh, I need to add a permission. No, no, no. We're not adding a permission. We're adding a statement that we're using in already defined permission. Right? So you define, you declare, you basically say, all right, we're going to choose user's permission. Click OK. Now, from this short list, we're going to find the permission for internet. There it is. It's one of the more common ones. So far, so good. Now, there's no apply button. So it's... Uh, uh, not obvious how you actually, you know, have this applied. So you gotta hit save for this to actually take effect. So hit save, and then it should say something like this. Or if you look at the XML file, basically you added this line by the, the UI. Okay. So whenever you do something dangerous, you ask the user to grant you permission to do that. So basically, when this the app is deployed, it's going to prompt the user. It's going to say, hey, before you install this app, this app wants to go and do things on this, you know, 
wild west of internet. Are you sure you want to install proceed with installing this app? And you got to grant all the permissions or none, none, none at all. Right? So, so why, mm -hmm. why Eclipse cannot fix that? Why does Eclipse what? Cannot fix the issue. Uh, it doesn't do the checking for you. It doesn't tell you, oh, you... Uh, yeah, I guess, I suppose, I suppose it could. It could basically check for your code and say, hey, you got to define these permissions. Yeah, it's good. There's information about that. So, now, yeah. Question. At the time of signing your app, let's say you do this, so you don't put in the permission, mm -hmm. you sign the app to distribute it. At that point of time, you have the wait, wait to be checked, right? And you create the entire APK bundle. Would it catch something like this? Like you're missing a permission, but your code actually. No, actually, this crashes at runtime. So the code that. Um, the code that actually connects to the to the internet is uh, is it checks it says do we have a permission so that's that's sort of like a business logic it says do you check you know assert permission to access internet uh, behind the scenes what really happens is this code is actually uh, now assigned to a GID called INET right so basically um, this app now has INET group permissions so so even if nobody checked anything if you have a one Linux process try to access another Linux process the kernel would uh, would kill it off right so technologically this is pretty decent good easy uh, good and elegant solution but we talked about it briefly the problem is the social engineering aspect of it right? so if I add, click on run it's gonna reinstall the app and then we'll run it Yeah, let me see my lockout. Then crash. Let's see public timeline. If I refresh this, and I think this is me, but I mean, you know, we can verify. I can say hello, mg update, refresh, and that's definitely me, right? So it worked. Woohoo! Now wait, didn't I say I was gonna ask us about um, approving a permission? Right? But you guys didn't do that. But it worked, right? So for development purpose purposes, um, it's just assumed that all the permissions are always granted. That's to minimize this whole cycle of like change something, deploy, test, and so on, right? So development purposes, all the permissions are automatically granted. Read the locket. Right. Let me see. So what I would suggest is, if you guys are not sure what's going on, right? What I would suggest is putting some log dot log logs, right? So for example, you don't know if it's just not printing anything after this line, or you don't know if this was successful. So how about we just print out something? I would just say log dot d tag oops, tag comma, you know, successful. Fully posted, you know, something status text, right? And then I would say something like that here. I already do died, right? <coughs> so run it with that and actually verify, you know, is it and, and try to add. I'm not sure this was supposed to print the error message, but it doesn't. So I added this and that seems to work. So try that. And it maybe gives you a little more clues about the execution of your code. So, ooh, we have something working, right? We can actually post to Twitter, and we can see that it's all working, right? You can verify that the the stuff is there, and I see you have some very um, interesting and meaningful tweets, right? So that's good, right? So you have a little web service going on here, right, with this app. You can probably now get what 19 cents for this app or something. Right? I mean, it works, right? So, um, well, one reason why nobody would buy it is because they wouldn't know if it actually worked or not, wouldn't work, right? So it'd be nice to actually tell the user, hey, this worked or this didn't work, right? So one way we can do that is we can do, there's this 
cute little thing in Android called a toast. Right? So what a toast is, is that little balloon that you may see, it pops up, tells you something, and then disappears. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Pops up, tells you something, then disappears, right? So, um, what we could do is, as opposed to saying successfully posted, which is nice, it'd be nice to actually do a uh, toast here to the user. So it goes something like this, toast dot make text, okay? It's asking you for the context. Uh, the context is um, the class itself, the status activity itself. So you can say status activity dot this. Because status activity is a context, it inherits from context. Uh, the text could be, you know, it could be something like this, successfully posted, blah, blah, right? Oops. Let me make this bigger because you guys can't see it. The duration is going to be, um, it's defined as milliseconds. So what do you think it is? I'm sorry, it's defined as an int. What do you think it is? <laughs> yeah. So that's a typical like Java conditioning, right? We would think that if it's in you know, a duration and it's in milliseconds, it's, in, it's an int, it's likely a, uh, it's going to be likely a, in milliseconds. Um, because that's how normally Java works, but it's not. It's actually one of the following two, toast dot length long or length short. It's an actual a uh, constant. And the worst thing is if even if you try to put 10,000 milliseconds, it's just not, it's going to work, but it's not going to be that 10, 10 seconds. This is going to be equivalent to long. Internally, it's predefined milliseconds. Of yeah, um, yeah, it's hard coded. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that's missing in here is that also is not very intuitive. That although you did oh, this called long thing, toast, make text, blah blah blah, you also have to say dot show. I keep forgetting for forgetting that all the time. So basically, I added this one line of code, right? <coughs> if you want, you can do the same thing in your, in your failure uh, when it fails, right? You could say toast that make text, you know, failed, died, something like that. Yeah, so far so good. So this should work, right? It should give me a little notification saying either succeeded or failed. There doesn't seem to be a third option, right? So let's run it and see what happens. So, let's say, hello, click on update, bam, it died. Right, it died, it did that for you guys? Okay, so it died, and if you look at it in, in the log cat, you see that it died on line 38. Or whatever line that is for you. So you go to that line and bam, 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 it died here. And basically, what it says, it says, um, it says something along the lines can't create handler inside thread that has not create looper.prepare. It's a long explanation. Basically, what it's trying to say uh, is that you cannot 
touch anything UI from a non, non UI thread. Right? So what we have going on is a non UI thread. So this thread is fine to do some work. That's okay. But if this thread now wants to go and update our user interface, a widget, throw a toast or something like that, that's not okay. Right? So how do we go around that? Well, there are different ways, and we could um, do various... Um, um, we could basically do various things with um, synchronizing the threads and, and so forth. Um, but all that is a lot of pain. It's a lot of work. So to make life simpler, because this is a very common pattern, um, Android guys developed a sort of uh, something on top of general Java threading thread me mechanism. It's called the async task. Okay. Async task. So so uh, async task is basically an asynchronous task, something that happens asynchronously and then updates the UI. Okay. So we're going to rewrite this ugly code using async task, right? In the spirit of first doing things the long way and then doing it the elegant way, right? Okay, to create a motivation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new class called async task, a post to Twitter task or something like that, right? So I'll call it class post <laughs> to Twitter extends async task. So far so good? Uh, all I did is these two lines of code, right? So, async ta task wants to take three parameters. Put your mouse there, it's going to tell you. It wants the params, the progress, and the result. So a classical example of an async task would be I'm downloading a file. My app needs to download the file, right? It's potentially a long, long downloading file, right? So I would have, uh, I want to outsource that to somebody else to do the job, right? Here, here's a file or many files. Go download them. Let me know where you're at, how far along you are. Are you 50% done, 75% done, that sort of thing. And then let me know if it succeeded or failed at the end of the day, right? So those are those three parameters. You basically have uh, the first parameter is going to be your input. What are the files to be done asynchronously? What's, what's the job to be done asynchronously? In, in the case of files, it may be like the URL to files to download or something like that, or file name. Uh, but in our case, the input is going to be, let's say it's a text message that we want to post. Right, to keep it simple. So I'll put a string here. And in case of file download, the uh, progress could be, for example, an integer. It could say, you know, 75% done, right? That's the most typical type of a uh, progress. But in case of posting to Twitter, you don't really know you're 25% done posting to Twitter. It's just like you wait, 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 and then do does everything, right? So it doesn't, the progress doesn't make a lot of sense in this particular case because we're not getting a feedback that we're done with, you know, first hundred of, of 140 characters, right? So we don't have the data. So I'm going to put void to ignore it. And finally, I would have the result. And result could be like a Boolean, yeah or nay, succeeded, failed. It could be uh, actual text message fail because of blah, right? So it's, it could be any of those. So I'm going to put string for now. So the, sec the last string represents the, the result, the, the error message. Right? So 
So far, so good. What happened? Sorry. So, uh, um, so now for the uh, so this is now underlined red. What do we know when something is underlined red? We do what? Yeah, you would put the mouse over it and it says blah, 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 blah. And I said whenever you see this type of a blah, usually you want to do the first one, add unimplemented methods, right? So you say, all right, man, <coughs> add unimplemented methods. And that basically adds a method that you must have, which is called do in background. Good. So, basically, in async task, doing background is what takes the job and does it on in the background. This is where your long running operation would go. Okay. So, in our case, the long running operation is this thing here, right? We said try, then go to Twitter post something, if it fails, so do this, if it succeeds, do that, yada, yada, right? <coughs> Make sense? Now, uh, you can cut paste this, or uh, here's a cool feature in Eclipse, if you guys want to know all these cool features. You can hold the Alt button and then do up, down. Alt. And then air up, down. Alt. Options. Option. It's Alt on PC. Or you can copy, cut, paste, right? Either way, we just move that blob of code into this location. So far, so good. Now, everything is almost not, uh, nice and dandy, except the it doesn't know what status text is, right? Well, status ta text in this case is the text that the user typed in, and that's going to come to us via doing background. So this string dot dot dot, do you guys know what string dot 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 is? Or like dot 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 in general? Yeah, you can have any number of arguments. It could be that it gets five five tweets to post or you know 10 files to download right so it's an ar uh, it's a variable length argument that's what the dot 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 means but ultimately all it is is it means that this var variable which is actually a dumb name arc zero doesn't tell you much but i would say params or something like that it usually means that this is an array right that's how it's actually represented in java so Doing background is going to get a bunch of mess, a bunch of tweets to post, uh, but we only care about one because we are only expecting one. So basically, status text is going to become for rams zero, which is the first one, right? Oops. That fixes that. Okay, so, um, but we're still, so doing background is going to happen on a separate thread in the background. So this is still going to crash. What we really need to do is we need to synchronize it with the UI thread. And that's apparently what async task offers. So let's do this. What we want to do is we want to look into possible methods that we can overwrite in async task. And it only has a handful of them. There's doing background, there's on, on progress update, and on post execute. So you, what you could do is you could go look up the documentation and figure out how async task works, right? Or you can do this nifty little feature in uh, 
in Eclipse, which is basically you go source, override implement methods, right? So what this does is Eclipse then goes and figures out, given where it's at, I inside of an async task, what are the possible things that we could be overriding or implementing? And Eclipse says, all right, I see you already take care of doing background, so you really have a couple of choices. On cancel, on post execute, and pre execute, and on progress update. So the progress update <laughs> is the one that gets called every single time there's an update. Like, for example, you know, downloading a file, and you're like, okay, I'm 75% done, and so on and so on. We said we're not using that one. So the only one that we actually care about is on post execute. That's what typically you care about. So on post execute. So select that one, click on enter. So you guys there? So what's going to happen here is that we're gonna have the um, the thing that runs in the background happen in the background. But then, what we, whatever we want to do in the foreground, in the UI thread, we can then do it here. So, this was our UI that was failing, right? The to sorry, the toast piece. Right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the toast piece down to post execute, because that's where UI should be running. Yeah. Also, the progress update. Yeah, progress update also runs on UI. Yes, because it needs to update the the um, you know spinner or whatever you use. So, um, what also we need to do is we need to um, then then we need to uh, here return the message. So as opposed to returning null, which is not going to cut it, okay? what we're going to do is we're going to return the message here. Return something like this. Successfully posted. Some piece of text. It's successfully posted blah. Similarly here, we're going to, as opposed to doing a toast stuff, we're going to say return and then the message is going to be fail to post blah. Right, so I moved the toast stuff into post execute. And here I just simply return a message in case it worked out and a message in case it failed. Right? And then finally I just need to fix this to become resolved. So at this point, everything compiles. So the return value, <coughs> return value of doing background goes to post it. Uh, so return value of doing background, yes. So I'm going to explain that in a second. Do you get what? Who, who gives the value to progress update? I'm sorry. Who gives the value input? Uh, whoever <laughs> wants. So whoever's doing. So this guy could, for example, if I had a progress here, I could say I could say this dot. Uh, there's something called like no. Uh, Uh, publish progress, and I could pro publish a progress like you know some some value, yeah. If I had a way to do this, but I don't have a progress. Yeah. So so far so good. So basically, what we used to have before is we had this thread where we did something in the background, some work, right? Right. That's what we had. Uh, the problem with that mechanism was that we were not allowed to touch the UI from there, so we could not update what's going on. So instead of doing that, 
we basically created this class where we moved the code that runs in a background into doing background, right? So that's our se se separate thread. Then we move the code that actually posts, uh, uh, that happens after it's done here into post execute. So all we have to do is kickstart the uh, kickstart a post to Twitter. So get rid of this and replace it with something like new post to Twitter dot execute uh, post to Twitter dot execute and then status text. So the thread under the own click before was not it was a, was not running on the power of the UI thread. That's why the thread it yeah the problem. Yeah. So async has the it, it runs on the UI the thread. That's correct, yes. But you said doing background is not running in the UI thread. Yes, that's correct, yeah. It's not. So this is what happens. So the do so basically let me draw this for you. So Post to Twitter, let me use different colors. Post to Twitter takes some kind of value, okay? And it says, execute this posting to Twitter. That becomes an input into here. That becomes that, okay? And that's what we are ultimately posting to, to Twitter, right? That's that, okay? Now, the result of that becomes a on post execute. So whatever we return here, or here, right, becomes an input into here, right? Make sense? Then we are we we print that out. So that's that's what we becomes the result, and we basically print it out, right? So and then this whole thing runs on 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 new thread, and this whole thing runs on UI thread. So this is basically UI thread. This whole thing, everything else is UI thread, right? UI thread, but this is a new, new thread. What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, so this should not be printing successfully posted. They should just print out a result. Yeah, because that's that input, yeah. Whatever that input is. Before, you are here the thread under the own click. The status text, you have to make it final, right? Yeah, yes. Well, yeah, we don't We don't need to do it anymore. Yeah, that was the eclipse. What was the reason why you have to make it final before? Uh, because you can't... Uh, if it's going to be changing, you can't be passing it into a thread. It has to be final? Yeah. Yeah. It's a new thread, and then this is the uh, yeah. this is going to be UI thread. Right? So, we can test this now. We can run it and see what happens. So, test is update and check this out. This will be the this was the toast. Then disappears, right? Mm -hmm.